Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studio. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, brought to you by thegaminggang.com. Tonight is Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. This is live stream 729. If this is your first time joining me, let me point out it is super, super casual around here. We are certainly not performing any sort of rocket surgery by any stretch of the imagination. Just hanging out, talking about the latest in tabletop gaming. So about the first half of the show is the latest in tabletop gaming news. And then the second portion of the show is always a first look or sometimes a review of or at a tabletop game. Tonight, we are going to be taking a first look. I am going to unbox Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Elector Count, designed by Martin Wallace from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. That is coming up in just a bit. Do want to point out, this is a live stream. If you're tuning in because you want to see this, it's about 25 minutes away because we always tackle the news first. If you're watching after the fact, about 30 minutes or more after the stream has ended, then there will be timestamps. You can just jump right ahead and avoid the news if you want, although there's some cool stuff that I'm going to talk about tonight. I also want to mention, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already, and if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the dispatch streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube. It'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as my review of Rackham Vale from Crowbar Creative. Yes, I liked it. I have to chuckle. I'll, I'll talk about this after the, the news, but uh, a comment I got from the fine folks over at Crowbar Creative that made me chuckle because I just said it made me chuckle. Didn't I? Why did I say that twice? I don't know. I have no idea. Smokey's down here in the duct tape studios tonight, kind of floating around. Won't be shocked if we see her jump up on the table again. <laughs> Should also point out when you're not watching videos on the gaming gang channel, be sure to visit the gaming for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more, you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. And finally, this is a live stream. So that means there is chat available. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But I do my best to pay attention to chat. So if you want to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question, a comment, by all means, please chime in. I will do my best. To respond first out the gate tonight we've got john vogel saying howdy clint gibson's with us flaming Huron is in the house as well flaming Huron's one of our chat moderators mr eddie t is chiming in so that of course means that uh sarah d is probably hanging around as well howdy 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 all righty then so, a uh, pretty interesting day today. I will talk a little bit about that. I got something cool that showed up. You might already have had a little bit of hint what it was. I talked about uh, somebody sending, somebody wants to remain anonymous. 
is sending me some stuff. I talked about it yesterday. Another package arrived. Holy jamoly. I'll show it after the news. Doug Roberts is with us as well. Very, very cool. Hey, don't forget, got the 50 fix, the, what is it, can't speak tonight? It's the 50-50 holiday auction to benefit Extra Life is going on. I will mention that again after the news. Do want to point out, if you're bidding on items, you have to comment in the comment section. Do not send me emails, please. They don't count. No matter how many items you're like, oh, here's my bids. It's got to go in the comment section. You can't email it to me because otherwise it doesn't count. All right. So let's jump on into the news because arriving early next year is the second edition of Valeria Card Kingdoms from Daily Magic Games. Here's the skinny. Greetings, citizens of Valeria. The land of Valeria is under siege by hordes of monsters. And yes, I said hordes. Mine's out of the gutter. You and your fellow dukes must recruit citizens and buy domains, like land, not web domains, to build up your kingdoms and slay the foul creatures that lurk in the surrounding lands. Valeria Card Kingdoms is a tableau building game for one to five players and will feel familiar to deck building fans. The cards you buy can work for you on your turn and on all the other player turns as well. On your turn, roll two dice and activate citizen cards with the result of each individual die and the sum of both dice. All players harvest resources at the same time. After you take your actions, pass the dice. The player with the most victory points at the end is the winner. Make a name for yourself. The aim of Valeria Card Kingdoms is to become the next King of Valeria by having the most victory points at the game's end. Points are gained by slaying monsters and buying domains. Additionally, your secret duke is revealed at the end of the game to accumulate more points according to your goal. Game ends immediately after all monsters are killed or all domains are purchased or when two times the amount of players' worth of stacks are taken from the center play area. Valeria Card Kingdom 2nd Edition is for 1-5 to five players, ages 13 and up, plays around 30 to 45 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $35 when it arrives very early next year. Cool beans. So I have to say, this is one of the Valeria games I have never played, and... The fine folks over at Daily Magic Games are sending this second edition along. I got an email saying that it has shipped out. So we will get to take a peek at this on one of the shows next week. Sweet. I've always heard that this is a pretty good game. I have to say the Roll and Write Valeria game that I just did a preview for the Kickstarter, in fact, it was my final Kickstarter preview that I'll ever do. Had kind of similar mechanics where you rolled a couple of six-sided dice and you activated each die and then the total as well. So it was pretty cool. Arriving next month, or I should say maybe later this month, not positive, all depends on shipping, is Kardashev Scale. And it's from WizKids. Here's the scoop. The Kardashev scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy it is able to use. A type 1 civilization, also called a planetary civilization, can use and store all the energy available on its planet. A type 2 civilization, also called a stellar civilization, can use and control energy at the scale of its planetary system. And a type 3 civilization, also called a galactic civilization, can use and control energy at the scale of its entire host galaxy. Race your neighboring planets for control of the galaxy by achieving technological and cultural advancements that harness the energy of your people and your planet. Engage in conflict, trade, or research as a means to cultivate your civilization. 
capture the energy of your home star and ultimately the energy of the entire galaxy. The most advanced civilization at the end of the game wins. Each round, you'll choose one of four actions to perform at a summit, collecting one of three types of resources or purchasing advancements. In a rock, paper, scissors fashion, you will compare your chosen action to the actions chosen by your left and right neighbors. Win against one or both of them, and you collect two of your chosen resources. Tie, and you'll gain one. Lose, and you get nothing. If you choose instead to advance, you won't get any resources, and your neighbors will each get to gain two of their chosen resources but you'll be able to purchase an advancement card, which will give you victory points and allow you to start building your engine. Game ends once one player reaches 25 or more VPs, and the player with the most victory points, obviously, is the winner. Kardashev scale is for two to six players, ages 12 and up. Plays in around 30 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $24.99. When it arrives in some places later this month, and other places early next year. I like science fiction engine building games, like where you're, you're building your galactic civilization. I just, I just dig it. I just, I like those. It's just something that appeals to me. And again, I've never actually ran a galactic civilization, but still, something that I, aspire to omenal has joined us in chat omenal points out uh no blind bids a eh, in the auction no actually that wouldn't even really be blind bid it's just i don't yeah sorry none of that gotta keep it everything on the level above board this one 92 is with us in chat as well let's move on to some role-playing game news because there's a new bundle of holding that has arrived. It features the Invisible Sun role-playing game from Monty Cook Games. Here are the details. Vizlay, reborn from June 2020, this Invisible Sun bundle gives you a new chance to walk the path of suns with the surreal tabletop role-playing game Invisible Sun from Monty Cook Games. In Invisible Sun, you leave this world of shadow to become a Vizlay, a student of magic, walking the path of suns to discover the deepest secrets of reality itself. Funded in a spectacular August 2016 Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign, Invisible Sun debuted as a physical black cube that carried a retail price of $250, packed with rule books, game components, and play aids. This revival once again presents the follow-up digital black cube with hundreds of ebooks and image files guaranteed atom free that is there are no physical components whatsoever included for unbeatable bargain price for just $27.95 you get these revived offers complete invisible sun digital black cube collection with a retail value of $99 as DRM-free PDF files with all the written components of the Black Cube. Four core books, seven print-and-cut decks of cards, handouts, props, an art book, maps, pre-generated characters, and more. Thousands of pages of incredible wonder. Or maybe 8,000 pages. Seven. If you pay more than the threshold price of $40.80, you'll level up and also get this Revival's entire bonus collection with five more PDFs and play aids worth an additional $87. Secrets of Silent Streets, an in-depth tour of Satering, the conflict-ridden city at the heart of the Invisible Sun setting. Book M, new forte, long-form magic, and character and house secrets, plus 200 new cards for spells, incantations, ephemia, I'm not familiar with that word. And objects of power. Teratology. 
hundreds of creatures, spirits, and other entities that inhabit the realms of Invisible Sun, plus new locations and insights to the path of sun. Then there is the Enchidrian of the path. Notes, maps, journal clippings, and tons of other print-and-play handouts for your table, as well as the Invisible Sun prop crafting kit. Make your own menus, handbills, tickets, brochures, and business cards to convey official letters, secret messages, or hidden clues. Score these savings on Invisible Sun through January 3rd, and 10% of your payment after gateway fees will be donated to this Invisible Sun Revival's pandemic-related charity, you guessed it, Direct Relief. I'm curious about Invisible Sun. I have only, well, actually, the interview I did with Monty Cook at Gen Con, I believe, I think the Kickstarter had wrapped up. Made it sound pretty interesting. I'm sort of curious. $250, that was a pretty big chunk of change, right? I'm wondering how popular Invisible Sun ended up being. Because this is the second time in about a year that we've seen a bundle of holding for it. And I could have swore at one point, I think we had a humble bundle for it as well. Got to say, this is a rocking deal, though. Because it's a hundred bucks just for the PDF, just for the PDF set that, like on Drive Through RPG, if you go check Invisible Sun, it's ninety nine dollars. I think it's ninety nine ninety nine to be precise. Here you can get it for twenty seven dollars and ninety five cents if you hit the current threshold price of forty dollars and eighty cents. You get a bunch of other stuff as well. So if you've been curious might be the time to jump in and check it out. Russell Higgins has joined us in chat. Speaking of people emailing me bids for the auction. <laughs> Sorry, I have to call Russell out because I tried to send him an email, but his sbcglobal.net account had me blocked. So, Russell, you have to place your bids in the comment section. So no emails to me. They don't count. You can email me and say hello. You can also, if you don't want your email address floating out there, you can just put a fake email address and you can email me saying, hey, Jeff, that's a phony email address. This is the real email address. Get a hold of me. Russell Higgins is like, who? What? <laughs> um, it all says uh, they think it's a premium game experience for a physical copy is uh, how Monty Cook described it. I actually saw it. I did not get to dive into it. Because if I remember right, I think it was behind glass at Gen Con. But, I mean, it was this massive cube. There were these books, tons of uh, decks of cards. I mean, there were hundreds of cards. Flaming Heron says, blocking Jeff. That's my IP address. So, you know, that's... Yeah. We won't even discuss IP addresses. Pain in the butt. Russell says, me not follow directions. Are you, am I sure I don't have him confused with everybody else? Nope, not at all. I'm glad he showed up because, like I said, I shot an email saying, hey, Russell, you need to, you need to do the bid in the comment section, and it, it bounced back. All righty. On to our next news piece. Coming soon in print and available now in PDF from Game & Curry Games and Wet Ink Games is Jianxi, Blood in the Banquet Hall. Here's what I know. Jianxi, Blood in Banquet Hall, is a collaborative storytelling role-playing game about a Chinese family making their living by running a restaurant in one of America's Chinatowns, circa 1920. Despite societal backlash and anti-Chinese laws, they've turned a profit and their quality of life has recently improved. Night, however, brings a new terror. 
players take on the roles of members of this Chinese family, mostly from the Yangon province. I'm sure I mispronounced that. Spanning three generations who face threats of Jiangxi hopping vampires. I think I'm pronouncing that one right. At night and racism by day. It has players balancing the responsibility of maintaining their family business with protecting themselves and their community from the dreaded Jiangxi. This is primarily a game about storytelling. Combat is limited, but horror, drama, and sometimes comedy are the primary vehicles for driving the game forward. This game bundle includes the 128-page PDF, also includes the scenario book and character sheets and so forth. It's available at Drive-Thru RPG for $25. Do want to mention, you can actually check out the scenario book absolutely free if you're kind of curious about this. The box set is arriving in early 2022. It's going to carry an MSRP of approximately $65. I got to say, this looks very unique, very different. I'm sure it's not everybody's cup of tea. We know that. But I thought this this seemed kind of kind of different, kind of wild. And uh, like I said, I actually have the scenario book. The scenario book was one of the freebies during the drive through RPG Halloween special. The kind of, uh, well, it, they really didn't do any sort of like scavenger hunt this year. It was just show up every day and here's something new for free. And uh, I'm sharing some images from it. Looks pretty cool. Like I said, this could be very, very interesting. All right. My final news piece. There's a new source book that's available for Vampire the Masquerade derived from Renegade Game Studios. Here's the latest on Sabat, the Black Hand. Brothers and sisters in Cain, united under the banner of the Dark Father, an antagonist guide to the cultic fanatics of the Sabbat. This book contains descriptions of the paths of enlightenment, the foundations of Sabbat identity, information on the Gehenna War, and how the Sabbat opposes the dread antediluvians. Who do they have? Robert E. Howard write this cell sheet info? Antediluvians. Oh, maybe H.P. Lovecraft. New tools to expand your chronicles, including disciplined powers, versatile antagonists, and the horrifying Rite of the Black Hand. It's about the Black Hand is a supplement for the Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition role-playing game, outlining in detail the lore and background of the Sabbat, including new paths and disciplines, histories, and new storyteller resources for a richer role-playing experience. Got to point out, this contains graphic and written content of a mature nature, including violence, sexual themes, and strong language. Reader discretion is advised. <laughs> Includes descriptions of the paths of enlightenment, contains information on the Gehenna War, and new tools to expand your chronicles. The 140-page hardcover carries an MSRP of $45, or you can grab the PDF from DriveThruRPG for $31.50. Uh-huh. I don't want to pick on Renegade Game Studios because I happen to like the folks there. But $45 for a 140-page hardcover? Come on. And worse yet, $31.50 for the PDF? Yikes. I'm sorry, but that is outrageously priced. And like I said, I'm not trying to pick on Renegade Game Studios. And I know they kind of came in out of left field and took over Vampire the Masquerade from Modifius Entertainment. But, come on. Russell Higgins says inflation. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of inflation. I I got to be honest. When we talk about PDFs, if it's more than half the price of the physical book, and the physical book has like a normal price, I find that to usually be fair. We were just talking about that superhero role playing game yesterday from Autark. Ascendant, 496 pages, and the, it, it is a soft cover, full color, was 55 bucks, and the PDF was $20. I thought that was a slamming deal. Russell Higgins says, get the old LARP rules and do Vampire the Masquerade. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are not big fans of, of the 5th edition. I reviewed it in... I got to be honest, I wouldn't run it. I mean, it's just, I've talked about this before that I just, I, I don't run games where the characters are evil or monstrous and, and things like that. And with the new fifth edition, the way it was written, at least in the core book, there's no getting around it. You know, you're not playing a Brad Pitt sort of vampire in Vampire the Masquerade. At least, I mean, maybe it's changed with some of the supplements that I have not seen. Omanal says they don't like 5th edition compared to the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade. I had, I've talked about it before, I bought a lot of the Vampire the Masquerade stuff when it was coming out. Number one, this is when it came out originally. It was from White Wolf, which was a Chicago-based company. So I was supporting a local game company and it was pretty cool. Never ran it, never ran it, never ran it once. I went to a couple of nightclubs that had some LARPers doing vampire. I wasn't involved in it, but I saw them. I knew what was going on. So Russell says vampires in Vampire the Masquerade are not evil. Well, some of them are. They have an agenda, but not evil. Uh, it was kind of bizarre as far as it's been a long time since i read fifth edition rules but the whole hunger rules there where it's like it's basically you're monstrous and there's no getting around it luke anzalotti maybe i pronounced that right i doubt it has joined us in chat welcome aboard luke thanks for joining us tonight so that's the end of the news. Last uh, item I was talking about, last couple of items I was just talking about, uh, are available over at Drive Through RPG. So don't forget that the gaming gang, thus the Dispatch, is affiliated with the One Bookshelf site. So if you are going to visit, say, Drive Through RPG, please stop by the gaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale. All those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up. And a lot of people out there do use those banner ads. I really, really thank you for doing that. Also, if you like what I do, if you dig the channel, if you like this video, if you enjoy visiting thegaminggang.com, which you should, if you don't, you're missing out on a lot of good stuff especially links to like everything I talk about in the news and that plus reviews from like Omenal and Kevin Smith and Sammy Uhas that aren't video they're written reviews so they're not included here anyway if you like all that by all means you can buy me a cup of coffee or some soda by visiting paypal.me slash the gaming gang. And there are some people out there who do that as well, such as mm, Clint Gibson. <laughs> I'm just saying Clint's name because he was the most recent, I think, if I remember correctly. So uh, there's some discussion of where people are located. Some folks are in Dallas, some folks are in Nebraska. Used to drive through Nebraska all the time. Got stuck in Big Springs, Nebraska for, well, not even really in Big Springs. 
it was at the truck stop and the Motel 6 there for three days when somebody decided to drive into the utility truck I was delivering to Washington State. Drove into it while it was at the uh, pumps. Guess it's a good thing they hit the truck rather than the pumps. Anyway. So, yes, I have been all over the place. Uh, so, Russell also points out, if you don't visit the website, you can't bid on the auction either. Which brings me to the 50-50 holiday auction to benefit Extra Life. There are nearly 150 entries, not just games. I mean, some of them, it's games with the expansion. Some are a series of books for various role-playing games. And half of whatever comes in as far as bids is going to be donated to Extra Life. So, very cool. Luke says they went to PAX Unplugged this past Saturday and met two YouTubers they follow. I was going. I was going to PAX, and then, the, I don't know, the, the increase in COVID infections and that, I had to cancel it. I was kicking myself because I really wanted to go because there were some companies at PAX that were not at Gen Con, and I wasn't going to go to Origins. I've kind of written Origins off now uh, simply because of some behind-the-scenes stuff that I don't like. So I was kind of bummed that I didn't go, and I get the impression that they won't give me a pass next year because it's two years in a row or two times in a row that they've issued me a pass, but I didn't go. So I don't know. I don't know. Russell Higgins is asking, is the dystopian war stuff in the auction? Yeah, I thought I put it in there. It is. It's part of the auction. I'll have to go make, I'll, I'll do an edit. Uh, yeah, I'm doing it all as one, one item. So yes, that is actually for auction. Uh, I'll try to remember to do that tonight. So, uh, Luke says they met Nerd Immersion and one of the brothers, Murph. Sweet. Very cool. Yeah, most people cover the hobby in that. They're pretty accessible. I mean, there aren't... I've never run across anybody who was like, all, oh, 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 I don't talk to the piss ants. <laughs> you know, it's nothing like that. All right. So, who else? We just had a couple of more people pop into chat that i did not say hello to yeah 245 trioxin and craig martin is with us as why did i say his last name like that craig martin yeah craig martin's with us oh boy <sighs> i'm telling you i can't wait till i get those implants this uh, this uh, partial, uh, I'm not liking it. Not liking it at all. In fact, I have to go uh, down to the dental school, the, well, it's university, tomorrow for my next step in the process. So, all right. Anyway, Russell Higgins says Steve Jackson. I've actually never talked to Steve Jackson. I just don't talk about their company. That's uh, no more. Anyway, we're not even going to go there. We're not even going to open up that can of worms again. So I was talking about something showed up. So if you were watching yesterday, I showed you Into the Borderlands, which is one of the original adventures reincarnated line from Goodman Games. And this arrived today. Yes, it's number six. The Temple of Elemental Evil. Two volumes. Brand new in shrink. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. So, thank you once again to the anonymous viewer. They don't want me to reveal who they are. So, we are going to have some fun we're, we're gonna have a blast come next month when i kick off old school for the new year do you want to mention a lot of people out there if you're if you watch this just like for more board game stuff 
There's still going to be board gaming news. But pretty much the show all next month is all going to be role playing. And it's all going to be focused towards it, not only what's considered OSR, but other games that are kind of a, an old school vibe as well. All right. Uh, Luke asks, why don't I talk about Steve Jackson games? We're not getting into it. <laughs> Sorry. We are not getting into it. It's one of those things got to be a longtime viewer to know about. All right, moving right along. Tonight, I am going to unbox and take a first look at Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Elector Counts. I don't know why they made it Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Unless that's kind of the old world setting. Because this is a card game. It's got, actually, it's, it's not roleplaying at all. This is from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. It is designed by Martin Wallace and is for two to four players, ages 12 and up, plays around up, plays around 20 to 40 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $29.99 when it arrives early next year. Uh, I, I believe some places are actually going to get it later this month. I had to point out, I've noticed that there are a lot of games that are hitting the week after Christmas. It's like, those are their release dates. It's like, oh, they just missed. Just missed. All right. So uh, Luke asks, what is my favorite game ever? Uh, I will tackle that when we finish taking a look at this. I assume he's asking me. I don't, I don't know who he's asking. Maybe he's asking everybody. All right. Moving right along. Let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Elector Counts, an old world card game. All right, let's get the shrink off of this. It's been a while since Cubicle 7 has released a board game, card game, any sort. I think the last one, if memory serves, was Cthulhu Tales, which... I have a copy actually up for auction in the auction. All right, let's see what we've got. So we got a rule book. We got a player aid card. Got some tokens, and obviously enough, we're gonna have some dice. Or I shouldn't say dice. We'll have cards. Yep. Okay. Some of those tokens are popping out. Okay. Let's take a peek at the rule book. The Empire is the greatest nation in the old world, a testament to the resilience, ingenuity, and industry of its people. Over 2,500 years ago, Sigmar Holdenhammer, what is, the font's pretty small. It's just, for some reason, this, this sentence doesn't read right to me. Over 2,500 years ago, Sigmar Holdenhammer as the founder of the empire, withstood the scourge of chaos incursion. Green-skinned invaders united the warring tribes and forged them into one mighty nation. The tribal lands became the grand provinces, each one ruled by an elector count. Could you be the elector count to take the crown and bring stability to the empire once more? It's a game of civil war, deception, brutality, and luck, where the fate of a nation lies in your hand sweet okay so talking about the components we have attacker cards defender cards support units and location cards we have four starting locations and an end of game card talking about the playing area here's an example of the play area so i guess each player has a uh, color so they have their own tokens and they have money so you can play a location card you can commit defender cards commit attacker cards play a support card place cards in your reserve purchase cards with shillings and discard cards for shillings 
once again, this is a Merton Wallace design. So every Martin Wallace design I've ever played, there's always some little mechanic where you go, hmm, hmm, <laughs> scratching your head. Bruno Azevedo has joined us in chat. Welcome aboard, Bruno. Good to see you. So we've got ending the game. The game ends immediately when a player has five fortification tokens, five siege tokens, or a combined total of eight of either token in play at the start of their turn. The game is now over. See who wins. Players now calculate how many victory points they've gained. Add up the victory points on each location card you have that is not under attack. Does not have any attacker cards committed to it. You also add up the victory points on each location card that you have uncontested attack against. Player with the most victory points is the winner. And then we've got a two-player variant. Cool. I do like the, the cover artwork on this. So then we get a player aid card, which is actually paper, but it is, it is treated, so it'll hold up relatively well, I would think. Okay, so we've got our tokens. So these are, I'm taking a guess, these are shillings. And these are cut really nicely because they're popping right on out. And we've got the four different player colors. And more of these as well. We got a whole row that's dropped on out. Got a bunch of baggies. And this insert's all kind of smashed up from shipping. That's got to be why these tokens have popped out. That's uh, that's all banged up there. And then we got a couple of decks of cards, so we're going to take a look at these cards real quick. So this is our end of game card. Starting locations. Got four of these. Assuming they're all different. Got to point out that uh, card stock's kind of flimsy. I would have thought we would have gotten a little thicker card stock than this. And as we can see, it's utilizing artwork from the various Warhammer Fantasy roleplay adventure books. So we've got Altdorf, Middenheim, Salzenmund. And Uber's Reich. Salzenmund is uh, a city I'm not overly familiar with in the world of Warhammer Fantasy role play. So we've got some defender cards. We have support cards. We have locations. Thriving Trading Town. Vorbergland Fields. Four Seasons Coaching Hub, Bustling Dockland, Humming Market Town, <laughs> Busy Coaching Inn, Chartered Free Town, Reichside Village, Town Market Square, Rich Farmland, Teeming Rookery, Reichwald Roads, Gray Mountain Fastness, Eaves of the Drakwald, Moore's Spark, Muddy Banks of the Stir. This artwork is from Death on the Reich, Director's Edition. Ostermark Hilltop Village, Wide Majestus Reich, Slopes of the Drakenberg, Depths of the Forest of Shadows. Forbidding Riverside Fortress, that's from, I think that's from Death on the Reich's Companion volume. And the Ughem Monument. So I notice each of these has what looks like a shilling value. 
and then we've got these tokens here. So I wouldn't be surprised if to take over this location, you probably have to have this number of attack points, maybe. I don't know. Kind of cool. So what else we got? These were some defenders. These are support, so our attacker cards. Probably some support cards, too, are going to be in here. And obviously enough, you're going to shuffle all of these, except for the starting location cards we were looking at, all together in one deck. All right, so these are all attacker. And, okay, so those are all defender cards. We'll just take a peek at some of these. That's like the attack value. And it looks like some of them have kind of a special bonus. There's quite a bit. I, I do notice there are some cards that are the artworks being duplicated because they're the same card. But uh, there's a lot of artwork in here. It's pretty cool. Mercenary Commander. Artillery Battery. Kettering Boca. So some of them, it looks like if they're like individual characters, there's a single card. I think. That's what it kind of looks like here. Lumpen Croups Fighting Cocks. All righty. Sterling's Revenge Free Company. So it is a free company. They are not revenge free. And a covertly conscripted witch. Those are the attacker cards. Let's take a look at some of the defenders here. Fledgling mob. All right. A lot of those. Garrison, Swords of Ulrich. The Reich's Guard, also Garrison. Company of Honor. Von Kragsberg God. Death Jack. Nice. Definitely dig the artwork throughout. Bruno says, artwork is pretty amazing, even if we're used. Can this board game introduce some of the Warhammer RPG mechanics? No. I can tell you, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, so Bruno says, they're not actually sure where Warhammer RPG ends and the war game starts. Uh, especially when we're talking Warhammer fantasy role play, we are certainly looking at a very, very huge difference in the actual mechanics of them all right so we've got conscription for support spoils of war flamboyant pistolier vernon investigator experimental artillery cut hellbug bloodthirsty slayer marcus wolfhart Confusing cartography. Bribing the paymaster. Not even going to try to pronounce that name. Luf Luthar Huss. And Belsarian Guilt. Or I should say Belthazar Guilt. Cool. Nice. All right. So we've got the big deck with three different kinds of cards. We've got the location cards as well the end of game card, and then we've got our starting locales for each of the four players. We've also got a couple of punch boards with tokens. 
a bunch of baggies, which I'll be using shortly. A little player aid and the rules. And that's what we find when we take everything from Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Elector Counts outside the box. If you notice, this just says Warhammer Elector Counts. That's what I think the original game plan probably was for the title. Yes, Luke, I'll remember to tell you my favorite game. Relax. Jeez. My goodness. I have flaming hair on bust out that band hammer. Don't forget, this game is designed by Martin Wallace for two to four players, ages 12 and up. Plays around 20 to 40 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $29.99. When it arrives early next year, or if you're lucky, in the next couple of weeks, depending on where you're at. I would swing on over to the other camera, so I got a few minutes. So my favorite game of all time. Favorite board game is Twilight Struggle. Got to say, I, I love that game. It is a blast. There is a reason why it's like, what, in the top five board games on Board Game Geek? for what, 10 years or whatever. It is fantastic. And every time I play, there's something else that I, I go, hmm, maybe I should have tried doing it this way. Although I do win about half the time I play. But I know it looks like it's a war game and people think, oh, it's a war game. It is not. It is absolutely not. And not only is it just a blast to play, especially if you and your opponent both understand how to play the game correctly, but you actually learn things about history too. So, and I am a history buff, and there were cards I was like, oh, well, what's that all about? And of course, in the playbook, you get a breakdown of what each of those cards actually represent throughout the decks. So, Pretty sweet. That is my favorite board game. Favorite role-playing game is called Cthulhu. Been running it for 40 years. I got it right when it came out. Started running it, so I've been running it since it arrived, and it is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. So, sweet. All right. That is it for this time out. Don't forget Check out the 50-50 holiday auction, the benefit extra life over at thegaminggang.com. Tomorrow, I am going to unbox and take a first look at Undaunted North Africa. Yes, it's going to be a War Game Wednesday. So we are going to take a peek at this tomorrow. The fine folks over at Osprey Games were kind enough to send this along because it's back in print once again. Alrighty. So if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the dispatch streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. It'll also inform you when I upload other videos, such as my recent review of Rackham Vale from Crowbar Creative. I promised I would tell you what uh, somebody over at Crowbar Creative said. They commented that it was really nice to see somebody actually had read the book and did the review as opposed to just paging through the book and kind of winging it. So it's like, who the hell? Well, I... I know there are people out there who review games and don't play them, but how would you, seriously, how are you going to review something like this without even reading it? And it's not that long. I don't know, but check out the review. Uh, it's, I really enjoyed it. I think it's very cool. All righty then. Don't forget, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com. 
for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Those of you who watched live, thank you very much. Those of you who took part in chat, I know we had some new folks hanging out as well. Welcome aboard. Always appreciate people hanging out in chat, keeping me company, so I don't feel like a complete doofus just into the camera. But I also know a lot of people out there don't have an opportunity to watch live. However you watch, even if it's on Memorex, I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. We have now cracked 5,700 subscribers, which I know for a lot of outlets, that'd be like, big deal. To me, it's a big deal, and I appreciate each and every one of you who tunes in to watch. I'll be back tomorrow. And of course, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, you're still here. Well, while you're kicking it, how about subscribing to the Gaming Gang channel or seeing the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch for finding out what YouTube recommends you check out here at my channel. And of course, don't forget, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com.